All right, here we go. This looks a little crooked. That's better. All right, welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. The Book of Mormon was written to the Lamanites as well as the remnant of the House of Israel. The LES Church has an agreement with the Israeli government not to produce a Hebrew Book of Mormon and not to proselyte there. However, Denver Snuffer says he's not bound by that agreement. So we'll talk about his outreach to Native Americans as well as to Lamanites. And so it's going to be a fun conversation. You won't want to miss it. Check out our conversation. Hey, I just wanted to mention one more thing. The Mormon News Report podcast is an awesome podcast. And they cover the week in Mormon news with a healthy dose of snark and commentary. Join Brant and Jenny every Monday to get caught up on all those news stories that you can stay up to date on the latest Mormon news. So check out Mormon News Report. It's a great podcast. Brent and Jenny are great friends. Now back to our conversation. There's another effort that uh, we've undertaken. Mm. The, original, the original purpose of the Book of Mormon was to try to um, recover two groups of people. One was a remnant in the Americas. Another was a remnant that is referred to as the Jews. Um, there is, there was one Hebrew Book of Mormon uh, that was made, I think it was in the 1940s, but it was taken out of print, taken off the shelf, and the LDS Church has signed a treaty with um, the nation of Israel that they won't, they won't do anything to proselytize. So one of the very target audiences uh, that the Book of Mormon was intended for, the LDS Church has abandoned by their commitment in order to get the BYU Jerusalem Center on the north of the Mount of Olives. Uh, they agreed that they won't do anything to proselytize. Well, we're under no such constraint. So there, there are two things that are, that are underway. The first is a separate bound copy of the Book of Mormon, which has been rendered... Um, into a um, Jewish-friendly uh, version using uh, Jewish spellings. The names in the Book of Mormon have been altered to Jewish spellings. The language has been, this is in English. I mean, the closest thing I can get in order for you to understand what, what we're talking about is this is a Yiddish version of the Book of Mormon. It's been published and um, titled The Stick of Joseph in the Hands of Ephraim, and it has a Hebrew subtitle. That has been uh, printed as part of this printing effort also, and it will be um, given away. Several hundred copies of that book will be given away um, to um, uh, Jewish people for them to consider the Book of Mormon in a more uh, Jewish context. And then secondly, the Book of Mormon itself is currently being translated into Hebrew and will be published as a Hebrew text. Um, the LDS Church, after they took the, uh, the uh, Hebrew Book of Mormon out of print, donated that translation to the... Um, Genealogical Society of Utah. Genealogical Society of Utah microfilmed it, and uh, we got a copy of it on microfilm. But as it turns out, it's not a particularly good um, Hebrew translation, so it's being redone. Um, a volunteer. Um, so this is in Hebrew then? Basically? This is not. This is in English. Oh, that's in English. But it's in English with Hebrew spellings and Hebrew oh, okay. um, usages in it. But it's an English version. So instead of using Jesus, it's going to use Yeshua? Right? Yeah. It's Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. Um, and uh, Moesha instead of Mosiah. I mean, the, it'll, be, it'll be Jewish friendly. Okay. Um, the, uh, the Hebrew language version, which will be in Hebrew is, uh, is a work that's underway. Volunteers and then some professionals are being compensated and then a PhD who um, his 
specialty for his doctoral thesis was rendering into Hebrew English, uh, English material, taking English material and converting it into Old Testament Hebrew um, language. That was his PhD thesis. Um, he's uh, on the faculty of a major university. He's doing the final edit uh, on the work that is being done to bring it into a Hebrew um, uh, language. And when that's done and is published, it should, it should withstand scrutiny from the most scrupulous rabbi of uh, anywhere in the world, New York, Jerusalem, Amsterdam, doesn't matter. Uh, it will withstand scrutiny as a, Are you uh, sure? I've heard there's a saying that take two Jewish rabbis and you get three opinions. Well, <laughs> they, they may differ on what they do with the text, but they won't differ on the language that got used in order to, in order to bring it about. But we're, we're doing uh, an equally serious effort with Native Americans and the remnant there. Um, we don't necessarily want a lot of attention for the effort that's being made. In fact, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of disappointment, even bitterness among Native American people because of what happened historically with the um, Indian placement program, with the with that Indian school that's now abandoned, much of it's been dismantled up in Brigham City. Intermountain High School. Yeah, the Intermountain High School. Um, there are there are children who were run through that program, who are now adults, who felt that they had been put upon, abused, um, belittled, discriminated against. Um, mistreated at the hands of an institution. So to say, hey, we're Mormons, kind of, uh, or we aren't Mormons, but we're bringing you the Book of Mormon, it's off-putting. You, you're you're going to have an uphill battle to even get a fair hearing because the, uh, the uh, LDS effort has been disastrously off-putting. So we're trying to... Um, deal with, cope with the trauma that has been inflicted by others in hoping to get a fair hearing for what the restoration could mean to Native American peoples and uh, getting them to respect what Joseph meant and what Joseph was attempting to do and what the Book of Mormon was really intended to accomplish. Um, but we're not doing it with a lot of fanfare because the more fanfare that gets called to something, the more um, people will draw comparisons and analogies that just aren't true. I mean, w my personal view is that the LDS Church institutionally has pursued an institutional self-interest a byproduct of their self-interest, fortunately, has been the preservation of the Book of Mormon, for which I'm grateful, the preservation of the Doctrine and Covenants, for which I'm grateful. I don't think that they were as interested in accuracy of the material or even in obedience to the material or trying to understand the material. But they, it served a self-interest. And that self-interest has been a blessing to me because they may have profited. They may have built themselves a trillion-dollar empire off of the back of these things. That doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that they have gifted to me generations later the, um, the Book of Mormon text and now through the Joseph Smith papers enough material I can do something to recover it and through the work of uh, Royal Skousen enough so that I can compare every edition in one volume, side by side. I was going to ask if Royal Skousen was a big part of this, it says. He, his, his, his work, work product right. was, his work product was a phenomenal help 
um, but he ha he personally didn't participate right. in anything. Um, but uh, uh, the Joseph Smith Papers, which is also the product of the LDS Church, has been a marvelous aid. I I buy the Joseph Smith Papers as they come off the press. Uh, I've got every volume, but I mark them up. Mine have interlineations, handwriting, cross references. They will the the editors will introduce material. In their introduction, they will absolutely contradict the document you're about to read. It's, it's glaringly stupid how they've approached some of this material. They will footnote stuff to say um, there is more to this story and this is the more to the story because they sincerely, devoutly believe that it stayed on the rails after Joseph died and that what they inherited and the traditions required that they take this position, what they inherited is in fact a preservation of the restoration through Joseph Smith. But the Joseph Smith papers demonstrate that it's anything but that. The, the editorial contributions, the footnotes, the headnotes, the descriptions that they give and the arguments that they make, um, it just wouldn't withstand scrutiny if you were subjecting it to, for example, the rules of evidence to get a document admitted uh, in a courtroom. Um, but that's, that's a whole other story. Well, anyway, I, we're trying to fix that <laughs> in this. <laughs> I understand that historians and lawyers have different rules of evidence. And I sure. should mention, you are a lawyer, right? I guess yeah, you yeah. probably yeah. Should, should have introduced that earlier. But. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Denver Snuffer. In our next conversation, Denver will critique Michael Quinn's work on polygamy. I, I was a uh, Fielding Smith, McConkie, Packer disciple, and to me, Michael Quinn's view was heretical. But as you begin to examine the source material from which Michael Quinn drew his conclusions, you begin to see that, that in some respects, he's not um, at all unfair, and in some ways, he's not just fair, but he's, he's kindly. He's, he's being um, sympathetic in his viewpoint. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents. And for just $5 a month, you can hear the entire interview without any interruption. If you'd like a paperback version of our transcripts, go to amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents interview. Also, if you'd like to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website and I'll be able to send you a transcript as soon as they are completed and click the subscribe button. You can also find our latest information on facebook.com slash gospel tangents, as well as we're on Twitter at gospel tangents. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. The link is at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents, and you can subscribe there. Also, please give us a five-star review. If you want to support all of the podcasts as part of the Dialogue Podcast Network, go to lyceum.fm, that's L-Y-C-E-U-M dot F-M, and do a search for Dialogue Podcast Network or Gospel Tangents, because, you know, that's a pretty cool one, too. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.